years later. Daughter fighting for justice in 1990 Mysterious disappearance of Susan Poopert. I was three at the time, Alex Poopert said. It happened in May of 1990. Alex doesn't really remember her mother, Susan Poopert. I had dreams about her that I think were memories, Alex said. Maybe it could have been a memory of when I was little, Poopert, a mother of two, was last seen on May 20, 1990, with two men after leaving a party in Lac du Flambeau, Wisconsin at 4 m. According to one witness, she was apparently being forced into a vehicle. Six months after she went missing, on November 22, 1990, hunters discovered her remains in the Chequamegon Nicolet National Forest. After testifying in court, both men who she was last seen with denied abducting her, claiming that they were going to transport the woman home, but instead dropped her off near a school. On November 22, 1990, her purse and identification were discovered underneath harvested trees. Her partial remains were subsequently found, she had apparently been sexually assaulted. Duct tape and plastic were also found, indicating that her killer or killers had attempted to hide the corpse. In 2007, a man was given several hearings in court after being accused of involvement in Susan Poopert's death, but the charges were later dismissed after witnesses declined to appear, although several others reportedly testified. The two men seen with Poopert after the party are considered persons of interest, along with the other man. Interviews about the case continue to be conducted between the three, but the men have given little to assist authorities. In 2014, evidence was tested for DNA after advances with technology, but it did not unearth any new clues. Suspicion has continued to circulate through the local area about those who may be responsible for the murder. Yet it is believed that most individuals have withheld their knowledge, out of fear. A billboard along Highway 47 detailing the case was created, in hopes of receiving tips on the case, with some success. Investigators reported that they received information about the case as late as 2016, which helped the case somewhat. It's just the hardest part when you lose somebody, Alex Susan's daughter said, her voice breaking. All that pain, it's still here. Every day, I think about my mom, he Jared, Susan's son said. I say hi to her, and tell her I love her. Jared wonders what his life would have looked like if his mother had never been murdered. He was only nine years old when she disappeared. He has such fond memories of her, Eskimo kisses, being silly, and laughing together. He remembers that she used to have his school clothes laid out for him each morning on the edge of his bed when he woke up. It was tough for him and his sister growing up. They were able to stay with family, but lived separately, Jared with a grandmother, and Alex with her aunts. Alex says that grow. The story of what happened to Susan Pooper that night is a little foggy, but there are a lot of rumors in the community. What we do know is that Susie went to a party for someone going away in the military. At around 4 o'clock or 4.30 am, she was spotted getting into a car with two men. Some witnesses say she was forced into the car. According to law enforcement, Joe Cobb and Robert Elms said Susie was with them in the car, but that they had an argument and they dropped her off at the local elementary school. Suspicion has also fallen on another man, Fritz Schumann, who reportedly bragged to community members that he was involved in her death. Six months after she disappeared, Susie's body was found on Thanksgiving, 1990 in Chequamegan National Forest of Price County. Along with her remains were duct tape and plastic, a clear effort to hide her. Murder. Law enforcement believes that Susie was also sexually assaulted. No one has ever been charged with Susan's death. Many people in the community have come forward with information, but many later recant. Police believe that someone, if not many people, know what happened to Susan. 
DNA testing remains a possibility using evidence collected from the crime scene. Alex said that she didn't learn what happened to her mother until she was older. My brother told me. My brother, like, he was really growing up. Alex told Dateline. He kinder, like, sat me on the porch and just told me. And I was exactly like that. It took me a long time to understand. As she got older, Alex heard more about her mother's case. We mostly hear, like, rumors. It was always rumored that he was kidnapped from that party, according to Alex. The gathering on May 20, 1990 was a party for the younger brother of a friend of Susan's and many saw her leaving with two men. Alex said that his mother probably knew the people he had left the party with that night. Reservation is a small town. Everybody knows everybody, she said. I was 18 when I first met detectives. Alex said I just wanted to know, like, what they were doing case, wise. Alex has since tried to keep in touch with the detectives. Sheriff Joe Fath of the Vilas County Sheriff's Office. He has been working on Susan's case with a team of detectives since 1990. She wasn't actually reported to us immediately. I think it came at least two days after she didn't return home, Sheriff Fath told Dateline. Initially, our patrols who were working they responded and received information and they coordinated a search of the area, a foot search with, I think, fire department personnel and some community members helping us back. The discovery happened at least two days after the party. And then, that's when some of our, me and some of our spies, got involved, Sheriff Fath said. Susan vanished at Lac du Flambeau which has a reservation. Sheriff Fath explained that the Vilas County Sheriff's Office was the primary law enforcement agency that handled anything on the reservation, which means the sheriff has jurisdiction over crimes within the boundaries of the reservation, said Sheriff Fath. So we patrolled the reservation regularly in 1990. Sheriff Fath confirmed the story of Susan leaving with two men. Witnesses say they left the party between 4 o'clock and 4.30 in the morning, with Sheriff Fath confirming that the pair told officers they all got into an argument and left Susan. It is a small community, and in the early days, rumors ran rampant, Sheriff Fath said. We have obviously pursued those rumors and tried to dispel them or go ahead with them. So it's, it's been a long process, the sheriff said the two men whom he identified from Dateline as Robert Elm and Joseph Cobb, are still probably people of our prime interest because they haven't been able to prove that they were not involved in his disappearance. He said Elm and Cobb have been interviewed several times by the sheriff's office. Dateline attempted to contact both Elm and Cobb for a comment, but was not successful. Sheriff Fat said a third name also came up in the investigation. A third person has come up over the years, and he knows we continue to talk to him, as well. But since his disappearance, we have spoken to hundreds of people in Lac du Flambeau, said Sheriff Fath. It's not just the two or three people we've interviewed or focused our efforts on. After six months of searching for Susan Poopert, her remains were found. According to Alex, Susan's remains were found by poachers right around Thanksgiving of 1990. Officers responded to the scene in Price County, which, according to Sheriff Fath, is about 12 miles from the night where Susan went missing. It was ruled a homicide, Sheriff Fath said. But, he added, there weren't enough residuals for the pathologist to make a specific reason for. Sheriff Fath told Dateline that the crime lab field response team had also arrived. We got clothes, we found the bone of his lower jaw, which we were able to identify through a forensic dental examination, Sheriff Fath elaborated. And I think there was evidence that the crime lab recovered. The crime lab did its best to process things and identify things of evidence, value. But it was not like an indoor scene where things were preserved and had a pristine atmosphere. 
After several years passed, with little stir in the case, officials tried something unconventional, the John Doe proceedings. 32 years later, mystery of Susan Poopert disappearance in 1990 is still unresolved.